Um, it is my absolute pleasure. Now, I was teasing it earlier if you were with us here at the Falcon Sanctuary earlier in the day. It's time now to change gears um, as we explore how a country that has been bruised and bloodied by war is using hardship to supercharge its future as it looks towards EU membership and digital revolution. This innovation, this enterprise, really speaks to the fight and courage that we see in every Ukrainian, from President Zelensky to the everyday person. It's now my absolute honor and pleasure to invite the former heavyweight champion of the world and a son of Ukraine. Please come to the stage, Vladimir Klitschko. Mr. Klitschko, please. <laughs> Thank you so much. Pleasure. Please come sit. Okay, so Mr. Klitschko, first of all, thank you so much for being with us here at the Filecoin Sanctuary. It's a real pleasure. Um, I want to start with that sort of sense of inspiration that I think everyone in the audience has seen from every single Ukrainian person. Um, I remember, if I may as an audience, I remember you know, presenting the news six hours of rolling news coverage on day one of this war. And the one thing that has really stayed with me every single day was the fear I saw on the face of every single person I spoke to, whether they were a correspondent on the ground in any Ukrainian city, um, a politician, the everyday person that was trying to flee what was going on at the time. But what has been really fascinating, I think, for just the entire world has been that fear has turned into fight. And all of us have been, I think, just an absolute amazement at the fight that we have seen from literally every single Ukrainian person. Um, and obviously fighting is something that is very personal to you, and um, something you know um, very much about. And it's also part of the motto for your foundation. I think it is fight for your dream. Um, the one question I have for you though, because I know uh, Mr. Klitschko is also gonna do a presentation for us on his foundation. How difficult is it to fight um, to keep the motivation of these children for them to dream and to believe during wartime? Hello again. I just um, uh, want to travel back in my memory because a lot of things happened uh, since the beginning of the war. Uh, basically, as the whole world couldn't believe that is such aggression possible. And there were warnings, as we know, and there was a lot of um, military forces on uh, the Belarusian border and um, warnings from the free world, so-called free world. Do not cross the line. That's what was addressed to Putin. And uh, unfortunately, the line was crossed. So and there was, there was also really warning. So disbelief that he would actually go through with this. Uh, it, it was it was it was this belief that it actually can happen, but eventually it is happened. And when it happened, you really need to adjust to the environment. And I love this theory of Darwin: not the strongest and not the smartest is going to survive or fight and win, but someone who adjusts to the environment. We're we're actually animals of habits. We humans, you know, we we love to do the same things that we've done for years and decades and all our life, and and we need to learn how to change. Uh, one of the learnings is as well, but I'm going to get a letter to it, is digitalization because it's a mind setup. What is digitalization? It's a mind setup. That's how you start. I first. love the how you use so with this, it's very important. With this mind setup, uh, we got into a fight and um, the free world gave us three days, right? Um, because the bear, the Russian bear is so big and strong and uh, it's one of the strongest armies in the world. And uh, to be honest with you, we probably give us as well three days. You know, we, we didn't think it's, it's going to last longer or, or so on. Um, but we learned one thing and that's experience that uh, many athletes I'm having athletic oh, background yeah. um, have experienced the same thing, um, different sports. And I will quote uh, Wayne Gretzky, he said, you're going to miss 100% of the shots you never take. So you need to get in the fight first and then you got to figure out what is in there. And you will adjust. You will adjust to the environment. And, uh, and especially when you feel and you know it's your home. That's where your children go to school. You know every street. You know uh, your neighbors. You know, uh, you, know, you know just the environment. That's your ecosystem of your life. And then someone walks in 
and not just threatening you, killing you, torturing you, raping you. You will do anything to stop it. And that we've been doing it for, for the past almost a year now. Next month is going to be a year since the invasion started. We've been fighting against a, just a brutal. reckless, brutal enemy, the evil. And uh, now I believe for the, as I said, so-called free world is clear what's evil and what's good. And unfortunately, the hesitation that has been taken by the free world took also our lives and destruction that we are facing, still facing in the country. So now it's kind of more unleashed with the support of the weapons. And um, obviously, there were weird things probably I would say before the war to mention and say, like, yeah, we need weapons. We need weapons to save life. Weapons usually take life. That's the irony of the war. We need weapons to save lives, to protect lives, and obviously to stop the war. Without it, we're going to be not the first and not the last. If we fail, it's not going to happen. That's why I'm not even discussing about it. But if we fail, Russia is going to continue threatening the entire world and trying to rebuild the country, trying to, after Second World War, rewrite the history and change uh, the borders of, of, of the countries and cause a lot of damage and for next generations as well and cost a lot of lives. So we were adjusting in Ukraine since the invasion started and we're still doing it. And uh, we're trying to fight smart and that's important too. And uh, we've heard this line probably before and this question, are you ready to die for your country? And um, you know what our answer is? And that's what Russia is actually, Russian soldiers being brainwashed that uh, we're so bad and why the reasons are reasons, by the way, changing all the time. Um, explanation of the invasion, you know, first it was Nazis, second was uh, NATO, third was it's our land, and it's just continued lied and lied and lied. But eventually, uh, I need to say that the core and the point of all of this, um, it's, it, is, it is crucially important to stay together, be united, stay in one front against this aggression, because we're, if, then we're not going to be the last one. And uh, that's going to be really carried over generations. And we will, we will, we will definitely struggle, all of us. I just want to say that, that uh, we don't want to die for our country. And there's a difference between Russian soldier and, and Ukrainian soldier. Because to die for your country, there's the simplest thing you can do. You can run into your death. But to live, living meaning struggling, fighting, feeling pain, happiness. So you go through a lot of emotions and opposites, but it's very complicated to stay alive and fight, and, and, and fight smart. And that's the difference between the Russian and the Ukrainian soldiers and the Russian-Ukrainian uh, army, because we live for our country, and uh, we will live for our children. And obviously, we're living and fighting for us all here, our allies, the free world, because the border of the free world is in Ukraine, and the front line is right now in Ukraine. 100%. Um, I think everyone, round of applause, please. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, well, Mr. Klitschko, what I'll do now is um, I'll allow you to introduce your foundation and for everyone to hear a little a bit about it. And I'll just pop off stage and I'll come back once you're done. Okay? Please take the floor. Yep. Sorry, that's my seat. If I could just, yeah. All right. Um, obviously, you should see something. Technology. Mr. Klitschko, oh, I think oh, it's... All right. So you can see... Through. I got it. So you got see it on the screen, right? Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So um, Klitschko Foundation... Klitschko Foundation was founded by um, Klitschko Brothers. So I have a brother that looks alike. Uh, he's in the politics. And, and I say, like, you know, one politician in the family is enough. Uh, but he's a uh, co-founder of the foundation. And... Um, 
I'm leading the foundation further, and 19 years ago that happened because we want to give back. We received a lot of support, and as we know, children need to be in a system of school, in a system, whatever they do, it should be systematic and sustainable, and that's how they will reach and get successful, reach success in life and be successful in their lives. So that happened 19 years ago. Next slide, please. Um, that's a picture of, um, as, as, as um, it is well said, alone, you can go fast, together you can go further and last longer. So obviously with, um, with the team of the Klitschko Foundation and as well as allies of the foundation, we know that this world is also um, full of people that are creative and not destructive. That's what we have right now in, in Ukraine. The destructive power of Russia is destructing us, disturbing our lives and taking also our lives and destroying our lives and especially of the future generation. Next slide. Um, since um, 2003, up to two and a half million children went through the projects of the foundation. And um, we have two foundations of, um, of, the, of our work, and that's education and sports. That was all before the war, obviously. Education is extremely important. Without education, you will less understand. You will be, you will be pretty much um, well brainwashed, could be well brainwashed like Russia does it with its own people. Um, with this brainwash, they really, unfortunately, reached a lot that even their soldiers or their people going into the other countries, Ukraine, and trying to take our lives and uh, fighting for some unreasonable reasons, so to speak. And um, this war that has been started is completely senseless. And sport. Sport is a great education, believe it or not. Um, sport gives you discipline. It gave me discipline. And thankfully, I was um, an athlete in my life, in my first career, and I've learned, learned four things that are important, four principles of life and success. Focus, agility, coordination, and endurance. I call it face. Face the challenge. Don't turn back to your challenge. You must face your challenge. Take it, see it, look in the eye to it. And uh, if you turn back to your challenge, you're a coward. And um, cowardness is the worst sense that we could possibly have. So face it, take it. And that's exactly what happened in the beginning of the war as we talked about it previously. Uh, we took the challenge and we're facing, we're still facing our challenge, this Russian army. Next pro as um, we already talked about it a lot, um, the life of us Ukrainians, and not only, I believe slowly, uh, life of a lot of people around the world has changed since the beginning of the war. In 2014, no, not 2022, 2014, many forgetting about it, but the actual war started 2014 with the annexation of Peninsula Crimea and annexation of the east of the country in uh, two cities, Lugansk and Donetsk. I must remind also that we Ukrainians were uh, warning the free world that Russians will continue and unfortunately our voices were not heard. And unfortunately Russians started full invasion of the country on 24th of February past year. With the subsidiary, comp not company, subsidiary um, a, a branch of the Klitschko Foundation, which was founded in Hamburg, Germany, uh, we named it since the beginning of the war, we all Ukrainians. We Ukrainians reflecting what the free world stands for, for democratic principles. And I believe that 
if you are if you're not turning back to Ukraine and to this war, and you're facing it, in some way, we're all Ukrainians all around the world. Maybe some countries that North Korea, as we heard, supporting Russia and uh, Iran with um, kamikaze drones that unfortunately taking lives of us Ukrainians, then uh, if you're not in that part of, um, of the group that are supportive of this war and to Russia in this invasion, then I consider you're a Ukrainian. So, well, Ukrainians, um, it, was, it was important to choose exactly that, that name and meaning behind it. Because wording sometimes change really the way we think. Um, in this case, we started 1.2 million was invested in different projects and assets that we received for, through the, through the um, donations. Um, medical care, education, and digital ways of um, prevention. Uh, we talk about digitalization a little more later on, but um, digital world is ex extremely important and has many, many positive, positive sides. Um, why it's so important? Because during the war, medical care and education are extremely important um, issues. It doesn't matter where they're still going or not, but our children must be educated. Because education, as I said previously, is the key for success in life. Next page. Next slide. Um, as well as the, with the Klitschko Foundation team and our allies, uh, and this synergy between between different organizations and uh, the support that we have received in Ukraine from the early beginning of the war uh, has been tremendous. And we were receiving it since 2014, as well as uh, after 24th of February of uh, past year. Uh, and this collaboration uh, with the organizations and people behind these organizations has moved uh, a lot in Ukraine. And for the children that have been removed from Ukraine and the children that are still in Ukraine um, and uh, still getting their education, still getting new tasks, uh, new reasons in life, and um, uh, that has been, this cooperation has been, has been just, uh, just amazing. And um, we hope it's going to be continued as long as the war is still going and obviously for the time after, after the war when we're gonna rebuild our country and hopefully you all gonna come and visit. Maybe some of you were already by the Champions League finals uh, two years ago in, in Kyiv and enjoyed it or um, uh, Eurovision Song Contest or just visiting city of Kyiv with a history of 1,500 years, more than 1,500 years. Next slide, please. Uh, speaking of digitalization, the world's life has changed, and in Ukraine it has changed also with the uh, pandemic, and uh, pandemic has taught us that we cannot maybe have con con uh, direct connection with each other. Uh, just maybe a year ago or half a year ago, uh, or early when pandemic started, you know, to gather together without the masks and be close to each other was almost impossible, right? So we were like keeping distance and all of a sudden everything got digitalized. Um, we had our meetings in, uh, through digital ways and um, uh, we started to pay more attention. We started to pay with our phones instead of our credit cards. And so there is a lot of ways that has simplified uh, our life and um, saved actually uh, a lot of time and a lot of uh, energy and, and a lot of other assets. And as well, it's saving our lives uh, in Ukraine. And with Digital Kyiv, we have achieved with the application of Digital Kyiv. Uh, it's also in English, by the way, when you're going to come and visit during the war or after the war, that's the way you decide, you, you, will be, you must download this application so you can be, you can be alert of um, possible bombing that we had and to find shelters where you can save you, yourself or uh, to find sources for... Um, medical care um, or getting 
better instructions of uh, how to act um, during challenging times of, uh, of the rocket attacks and bombings and basically survive or get maybe air quality if you care about that when, when it's more or less peaceful. Um, you can find right transportation. So there's a lot of services that actually um, other applications has been doing and uh, afford, um, giving to us ar around the world. So in Digital Kyiv, we have pretty much um, the same and more. We're probably one of the first nations that have implemented uh, digital passports in one application uh, in Ukraine, uh, digital driver's license. So it's all in one application where we can, um, where we can apply for certain services and getting it. And uh, it has been working really, really well. Um, and, I, and I have to say that aside from, uh, aside from services that we've been created, create, uh, creating and providing, uh, we also, with the foundation, put lots of attention to education. Um, also, children have to learn how to get in school, but not uh, in a school like in person. Uh, but also through the digital way. And um, all those classes are still going. Uh, the numbers are represented. Um, classes are still going from their schools in Ukraine, but if children have been removed abroad, so they still be part of the school and so they can gather digitally with their, with their bodies of the school and uh, um, um, enjoy each other digitally, but also, as I said, getting getting education through different, different ways and with a different, different classes. Um, speaking of, speaking of um, supporting Ukraine, supporting uh, foundations, supporting, uh, let's say, uh, let's say uh, our future and our kids, now there are also a way of um, help and, um, and support of, um, and choice, because some of us wants to help Ukraine, but we don't know how. To get the answer how to support in the right place, just um, with this QR code, you're gonna get different options. You can download it on your mobile device and uh, find out uh, where your heart is and where you want to, want to be part of, of this support and help in Ukraine, especially for the Ukrainian children. Thank you, Vladimir. Thank you so much for that presentation. A round of applause, please, everyone. Very good. Okay, please do take a seat. Um, it's my pleasure now to invite the rest of our panelists. Um, we have Marta Belcher, who's the president of the Filecoin Foundation. Please welcome, please take your seat. Um, we also have Jonathan Dotan. He's a founding director at the Starling Lab, and he was also speaking earlier here at the Filecoin Sanctuary. Thank please, you. everyone, please come sit. <laughs> Okay, well, obviously Vladimir was, you know, talking so much about digital Kyiv. I mean, all of this is so important for Ukraine um, in their fight in this unjust war. Marta, I'll come to you then. Um, you know, Ukraine is using technology in war. But as Vladimir was saying, this isn't something that happened overnight. This has been happening since 2014. So take us through the sort of technology that you're seeing and, and what you see is really important for Ukraine in this fight at this time and perhaps, I don't know, maybe the future. Yeah, you know, I think it has been absolutely astonishing, frankly, what Ukraine has been able to do from a digital perspective. I think this is really a war that from minute one um, was in, in large part fought in such an innovative way. Um, you know, within a day or two of the start of the invasion, um, it was unbelievable to see that Ukraine had spun up what seems to be, I think, the first ever uh, IT army of Ukraine. And they spun up this uh, group, this sort of chat group that hundreds of thousands of people from around the world actually joined. And they would have things that people could do from a technological perspective um, that would be helpful. For example, um, you, you know, it turns out that if you are if you are posting restaurant recommendations uh, in Russia, you can get around some of the 
uh, some of the uh, blocks and you can actually say what's happening in Ukraine in these certain places where there aren't actually blocks. And so you have hundreds of thousands of people suddenly going and flooding you know, restaurant recommendation sites with actual information about what's happening in Ukraine and things like that. So really so incredibly innovative. Um, and the Ministry of Digital Transformation has done such an astonishing job and really from the technology sector, we're just looking at Ukraine and what Ukraine is going to do, I think, um, you know, post-war and really thinking that this is, this is always has been and is going to continue to be one of the most innovative countries in the world, um, really pushing forward um, the digital sector for the entire world, not just for Ukraine. Of course, and we were speaking earlier, I think it was on Tuesday, we were on a panel with um, Mikey, um, a US Congresswoman, who was saying that she went to Kyiv and literally she was astounded by the innovation that's going on because it was even better than what she sees um, in the US. Um, Jonathan, coming to you then, I mean, you were here earlier in the morning um, talking about um, Starling and the work that you're doing on the ground in Ukraine. Tell us all a little bit more about that. Um, your focus, you said, is documenting um, the attacks that Russia had, the unjust attacks um, on Ukrainian schools, isn't it? Yeah, so it should come as a surprise to no one that we're in the middle of not only a war on the ground, but also a cyber war. And Russia has perfected those tools over the last decade. Um, we saw it very clearly in Syria, and then now it's carried directly now into Ukraine. And the question becomes, how can we have a resilient internet that is able to overcome these types of attacks? Because indeed, Russia is preying on the exact weaknesses that we have in a centralized internet that's controlled by whimsical CEOs, what appears to be illegal monopolies that dominate the internet, and Russia's found a way to manipulate that. Uh, we know this, we've known it for years. So as the war began, what has been fascinating is that a, a new generation of Ukrainians have risen up and actually created a new form of resilient technology that uses decentralized tools. They're very quick to embrace them, and what's fascinating about it is it takes information, it spreads it out as wide as possible, and then it uses advanced cryptography to ensure that if someone, for instance, is taking a photo, that we know that it is an authentic original photo. And that is such a critical issue. It sounds so simple, right? Because we've all grown up with this idea of believing what we're seeing, but now in a world of generative AI and cyber warfare, doubt is being weaponized. So our teams have been working on trying to use applied cryptography, putting in the hands of Ukrainians who've been only too willing and, and very innovative, and then bringing that over to the authorities, the OTP, the ICC, the National Criminal Court, the Office of the Prosecutor. And these are forming the basis of a new way of preparing evidence that we believe will be resilient in the decades that it will take to deal with accountability in Ukraine. We need new tools to deal with these problems and they need to last and persist so that justice can come uh, to prosecute what are very clearly war crimes that are being perpetrated every single day. That is such important work. And Marta, the Falcon Foundation is also helping to evidence the war crimes, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. Um, so we've been, I mean, completely blown away by the work that the Starling Lab has been doing, um, really evidencing war crimes in Ukraine and making sure that this evidence is preserved into the future. And as Jonathan has said, not only that it's preserved, not only that it, it really truly can't be deleted, that it's backed up in many places and that the availability of information isn't dependent on you know, any one person, but also that you can actually cryptographically verify that this is not misinformation, right? And that is so important because so much of what I understand to be Russian messaging is that the photos that you see coming out of Ukraine, not that they don't exist, but that they're fake, yeah. right? And so when it comes time to actually be in the International Court of Justice, right, um, and to be prosecuting these war crimes, to be able to cryptographically prove that these photos are real and they have not been tampered with mm. is so powerful. And that is why we are so uh, excited to be working um, with Starling Lab at the Filecoin Foundation. Yeah, no, I mean, definitely the work that both of you guys are doing is just phenomenal. Um, Vladimir, so you've heard from what Jonathan and Marta have said about evidencing these horrific war crimes um, that, that, that Russia um, is, 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 is doing. Um, you know, across Ukrainian cities, um, there have been just so many horrors. We've seen the horrors of Butcher, um, Herson, um, so many lives have been brutally lost. 
given the work um, that Marta and Jonathan are doing, can this evidence lead to real justice for Ukrainian people? What does justice look like to your people? First of all, we need to win the war. We need to get to our borders from 1991. We give up the nukes because we trusted the free world and we were in top five nuclear powers in the world. And um, one of the countries that signed this agreement was Russia, aside from the US. And uh, unfortunately, what happened is matter of fact, and to us is extremely important that we liberate our country. We have peace that we had before. And that's probably what we work for. Obviously, justice will occur. Behind every killing, behind every rape and torture, there is a first and last name of the person who ordered it and who executed it. And there are, thankfully to the digital world, there are a lot of facts that has been taken by the sur surveillance cameras, how Russian soldiers are having fun just killing civilians like Safari. It's horrific. And it is horrific and those images are disturbing. And uh, digital world will help us to save so you cannot rewrite the fact. And uh, blockchain is part of it, that you cannot really destroy the history that is already, what's done is done, and that's gonna be represented um, at the International Court, and justice must occur, well, and that, will occur. Well, I, I think we all hope that justice um, will, 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 will come for Ukraine. Um, and it, it is important, so the next dictator or someone else in the world, not gonna repeat the same. Because, you know, if, if Putin is going to have success, that will create a lots of more turbulence in the world. There are gonna be others that will think, well, it worked with them, it's gonna work also in my case. And uh, 2000, between 2014 and 2022, there's a huge gap that no one did anything because Russia is too strong, too big, or I still have business with them. But where is moral? Moral is the core of us human. And moral is the core of the free world. How can we build a country or a community if our moral is wrong? What's that life gonna be like? So it is important to have justice. And it's uh, very important as prevention for the future. So Definitely. such negative things will not have a, happen again. We can only hope so. Um, and as we sort of look, or at least we try to look beyond this war, um, Jonathan, um, obviously you're working with evidence in war, but what technologies can you see, new technologies that Ukraine could use um, beyond this war as it looks towards its digital future, its revolution? Well, I, I think we are focusing on the attacks on children and the schools that they've been going to that have been destroyed systematically by the Russians because we believe that one of the important things is to defend the rights of children and to preserve the evidence of the attacks directly on them. And in the decades to come, those children are gonna need support because transitional justice for them to be able to rebuild their lives requires evidence. And so I think that's a really important piece of this is that the record keeping that's gonna help Ukrainians rebuild their lives and indeed reimagine their lives, that begins with really solid records for them to be able to hold on because the assault on the truth we've been talking about here is very real, especially when you look at forcible deportation of children, hundreds of thousands of children. Over 700,000 were deported and stolen by Russia. So it's an attack not only in the sense of moving them across the borders, but they've erased their identity, they've erased their history. And so that's why this type of technology is very important because it can establish beyond in a single place or a dependent place, you can now have a way of distributing out the information, protecting it so that we can have a chance of re-identifying, 
children, finding ways to get them back to their families, giving them their rights back in a new, reimagined Ukrainian society. Think about this. It's, we have been struggling in the West to even provide the basic laws that can allow for this type of technology to exist. Ukraine is already building a tremendous infrastructure yes. to help them rebuild their country, and it has been a true inspiration. Meet inspiration, any young yeah. no, Ukrainian. No, I think inspiration is 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 the key word here. Um, we are, as the screens are saying, we're, we're out of time. Vladimir, just this last question, very very quickly: Is this fight for Ukraine the biggest fight of your life? It's not just about my life. It's um about life of millions of Ukrainians, life of not just Ukrainians, um, other countries have been suffering under Russian um, aggression, and Ukraine is just another one. So it's um, not to compare with the previous sport. You know, before I was, um, I was handling uh, well my opponents with my fists. So now the fists turn into, into the weapons. And that's a big difference where you're winning or losing with your life and not just with raising or not your hands up. So it's um, a fight for all of us, including you, and sitting here and also um, who is observing and watching it somewhere outside uh, with this broadcast. It's, it's, it touches all of us and it's extremely important for all of us. So let's stay together in one front against this aggression, against the evil. And eventually, we will conquer and win. win we will that. conquer the evil and we will. We will prevail because our will is stronger than any army and any weapon. Thank you. Thank you so much. Slava Ukraini. Thank you so Good much power. to Jonathan, Marta, and of course, the former heavyweight champion of the world, Vladimir Klitschko. Thank you. Thank you all so much. It's been a Thank pleasure. You. Thank you so much, Marta. Thank Jonathan, you so much.